Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to introduce a new concept of ecological pyramids. So what are these ecological pyramids? They will talk about how the energy changes from one trophic level to another. Not only energy, but how energy changes, how biomass changes, how the population of organism changes from one trophic level to another. So these pyramids represent the food or energy relationships between organisms at different trophic levels of an ecosystem. So it will tell us about the energy relationship which I have already introduced some time back that how energy decreases as we go to higher trophic levels. Similarly, it will also tell the food relationships between organisms that is which organism act as food for which other organisms. So that's how. So this, this pyramid is going to be a simpler structure rather than drawing a food chain or a food web which, which looks complex. These pyramids will look simpler and it will give us a better representation of the energy relationships. So this is how the pyramid will look like uh, because of its shape it is called a pyramid because the base is bigger and the top or the apex is smaller. So because of the shape it is pyramid and since it is related to the ecosystem it is called ecological pyramids. So the base of the pyramid represents the producer. So this base will always represent and the apex or the tip will represent the top consumers. So something of this sort. So here which is the producer? This is the producer. So the producer will be represented by the base and the top carnivore or the top level consumer will be represented by the apex. Now depending upon the number of levels we have in the food chain, this pyramid will also have number of layers. So for example here we have tropic level, first tropic level, second tropic level, third tropic level and fourth tropic level. So that is why you have four layers, one, two, three and four. So what are these four layers of the pyramids? Producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. So these are ecological pyramids. Now ecological pyramids can also be three, four or five steps long. Now, but it, as I said, it is always preferred to have smaller food chains because as we go higher, the amount of energy in that particular trophic, trophic level is going to reduce a lot. So now we are going to talk about the types of ecological pyramids. Now, there is an important question which might haunt you. How is the relationship between different trophic levels expressed using ecological pyramids? Because I told you that we are going to see how uh, the how the number of organisms changes in different trophic levels, how the energy changes in different trophic levels. But for that, why do we need ecological pyramids? How will the pyramid help us? So let us try to look at that. Now, in, in the hunt of seeing how relationship gets expressed using ecological pyramids, we will talk about three different types of ecological pyramids. Pyramid of number, pyramid of biomass and pyramid of energy. Now, once we study about three pyramids of number, biomass and energy, we will be able to find out relationship between the different trophic levels using these pyramids. So let us start with pyramid of number. So this says that the number of organisms decreases as we go higher in the pyramid at higher trophic levels. Now as we go higher in the pyramid means we are going to higher trophic level. Now as we go up to higher trophic level the number of organisms at that trophic level will reduce. So let us take an example of a pyramid. So this is the pyramid. So you see producer are the biggest because the number of trees are maximum. So let us take this example. So let us say that at the producer level we have plants say grass, grass or plants or whatever. So if if we are just, I am just taking an example. So let us say we have some 1 lakh plants. Okay. So I have 1 lakh plants at the producer level. So these numbers are just some imaginary numbers just to explain you what happens. 
that the primary consumer levels are these goats. Let us suppose goat is at the primary consumer levels. So it has been observed that the number of goats at the primary consumer level decreases to somewhere around 50 or 100. So this is where the number of goats reduces to. So some 100 goats are left. So there were 1 lakh plants and now there are just 100 goats. Now when you go even higher, somewhere at the level of these wolves, which eat the goats, the number of wolves are even lesser than that. So the number of wolves are somewhere around 10. So some 10 wolves exist. And when you go at the level of a lion, maybe around some 2 lions exist. So if you compare the number of lions which exist and the number of plants which existed, there is a huge difference. So the number of organisms at higher trophic level also decreases. So now with this data, you can also understand why we do not want a trophic, why we really don't have food chains with too many trophic levels. That's because as we go higher, the number of uh, top carnivores keep on decreasing. So see, when you have two lions, so if you have something beyond this, that, that is not going to exist at all because the decrease is so much. So further top level of carnivores can't be supported by one lakh plants. So that is also there. So only less number of top carnivores can be supported with the number of plants which we have at the producer level. So the number of plants which are present at the producer level decides the number of organisms that can exist at the higher trophic levels. So pyramid of number tells us that the number of organisms decreases as we go to higher trophic levels and the pyramid itself speaks for itself. Next is the pyramid of biomass. This shows that biomass decreases sharply as we go to higher trophic levels. So, and that is why we get this pyramid. So pyramids, the, the shape itself tells that at the bottom you have maximum and at the tip you have minimum. So biomass also decreases as we go higher. So we will take the same example and here let us talk in terms of biomass. So let us suppose some if the plants which are present at the producer level, let, let us say some 800 kg of biomass is present at this level. That is the amount of living material which comes out of all the producers. So let us suppose that is some 800 kgs. Now can you imagine what would be the amount of biomass which is present at the second trophic level, it, will, it is going to reduce drastically. So the reduction is so much that here the biomass is around 40 kg. So just imagine from 800 to 40. So the reduction is quite sharp, sharp decrease. And again, when you go to the next trophic level, that is the third trophic level of bulbs, what happens here? Here the, it reduces to around 10 kg and finally, at the level of the line, it reduces to around 1.5 kg. So we actually see a very sharp decrease in the biomass as we go to the higher tropic levels. So that is also the amount of biomass that can be retrieved from any of the trophic levels. This will also reduce as we go to higher trophic levels. So now the third pyramid, that is the pyramid of energy. Now about energy, we have already discussed using Lindemann's 10 percent law that the energy decreases as we go higher to the trophic level. So if we talk about an ideal pyramid of energy, it should strictly follow Lindemann's law. And if it follows Lindemann's law, how would it be? So again, the same example. So following Lindemann's law, if there is 10,000 joules of energy at the producer level, then only 10% of it should go to the primary consumer level and 10% 10, and 10 of it is going to be 1000 joules. Again, 10% of this should go to the second, third trophic level and that will be 100 joules. And again, 10% of this is going to be 10 joules. So if you see, the lion will only have 10 joules of energy, whereas the plants had 10,000 joules of energy. So this is the scenario of an ideal pyramid of energy. But normally the pyramid of energy is not ideal and therefore the decrease is not always exact 10%. So these are the three ecological pyramids and with this you would have understood that why ecological pyramids were constructed. 
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.